Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another VidIQ live stream. I am Dan, and today we are going to take a look at your YouTube channels, provided that you are watching live or you managed to pop in and submit your channel using the forums below. If you're not watching live, though, that's okay. And if you're watching live and you don't see your channel come up, either way, take some notes because the channels we see today are going to be covered in all sorts of different ways. And they're probably going to be making maybe some of the same mistakes that you're making. They're probably going to get some advice that you could apply to your channel. So make sure today while you're watching, take some notes and uh, let us know if you're watching this after the fact in the comments, where you're at in your YouTube journey, how many subscribers are you at, what kind of goals do you have for this year? And then you in chat, let us know as well. What is your goal for 2023? The first person I'll bring on today is Viper. How's it going? Oh yeah, we're back, baby. Hey people, what's going on, Dan? Happy Tuesday. We are live in the building. Let's get ready to all some channel today. Let's go. Let's do it. Glad you're here. Glad you're excited. And today's guest, Sean Cannell. How's it going? Mm. Rise and grind. Good to see you, Viper. Good to see you, Dan. What's up, everybody? Super fired up for uh, crushing it today. It's 2023. It's time to build. Yes. Uh, thank you for being here, Sean. Uh, Sean is from Think Media. The link is down below. And uh, we'll be talking a little bit more about that in just a little bit. Uh, first, we want to play for you a very quick segment about how this all works for anyone who might be new. Welcome to the vidIQ channel reviews live stream. Simply fill in the correct form in the video description and your channel will be considered for review during a live stream. Channel reviews are free, so no need to send us a super chat and don't spam us in the live chat. We'll ignore it and you may be putting time out. After the live stream, don't forget to download the vidIQ extension where you can get a custom channel audit, daily ideas and an AI powered video title generator. Link is in the description. If you submit your channel for review, expect the following. We are sharing nothing more than our knowledge, experience and passion as fellow creators thank you to all of our moderators who help us out on the live stream every week you know who you are give us a like if you enjoy this live stream subscribe if you love it and share it with like-minded fellow creators all right let's get started all right so that's how that works uh sean before we get going though uh tell everyone a little bit about you tell everyone a little bit about think media and uh, what you got going on yeah, so uh, Think Media is a channel that helps people with the best tips and tools for growing their influence with YouTube and online videos. So we do a lot of uh, videos, uh, creating thumbnails, cameras, lenses, microphones, as well as some YouTube tips. And um, started it years ago, and and today uh, in my bedroom shooting videos by myself. But today we have creators like Nolan Molt and Omar El Takori. Uh, helping make videos as well. And it's been a pretty wild journey. We're uploading seven a week uh, right now. So we upload daily five full length videos and two shorts is kind of our typical cadence or a live stream that intersperses in there. And um, yeah, it's been wild. So if you want to check it out, Think Media on YouTube. There you go. Again, link is down below. Sean, thank you so much for being here. Uh, so we have pre-selected a number of channels. And then like the video said, there is a form down below where you can submit and we will start randomly picking channels in the second half of today's stream. But what we like to do is pick the very first folks who manage to submit on both forms. There's a gaming form and a non-gaming form. So on the non-gaming form, the first channel that submitted was Crazy Chickens with, with a few extra letters here and there. Uh, it looks like it's going to be a golf channel. Um, just at first glance here, uh, Viper, why don't we start with you? You said it looks like a golf channel? This does not look like a golf channel. Oh, I was man. looking at the banner. Uh, oh, okay, I'm like, <laughs> what is he talking about? That's a good observation. We have snowboarding, yeah. Uh, yeah, we got, pocket knives. Uh, yeah, we got a little bit of everything. So my first oh, is it 360? Line. It's all 360 camera. Is it? Oh, uh, maybe. Uh, yeah, but my first focus would be that uh, my first observation is that there is no channel focus going on. Um, so I would advise um, the creator at some point, you don't have to do it immediately, but at some point, you're going to have to figure out where you want to take your channel. You have to come up with a consistent theme or a consistent subject to make videos about um, if you want to grow. And I'm assuming you want to grow since you submitted your channel to VidIQ. But if you want to grow, you're going to have to come up with a consistent subject to cover. Because when you are doing things all over the place like you're doing now, we call that variety content. And it is very difficult to grow a variety channel because when people don't know what to expect from you, it kind of makes you unpredictable and erratic and people just don't, they don't job with that. So they are less likely to stick around when you don't have a consistent channel focus. So I would suggest to this person, uh, 
yeah, if, if, if you're new and you're trying to figure out where your groove is, that's fine. But figure out your groove. And then once you figure out your groove, take that and run with it. Sean, uh, you noticed the 360 video right away. Anything else uh, you're noticing? Uh, this is the video from yeah, a year ago. Yeah, if you go back to the banner up top, crazy chickens. Okay, so maybe, so it's not even all 360. What if we go to vidIQ uh, stats? I'd love to see the the stats. Uh, let's see. Yeah. They've added so many buttons now that our stats got pushed over. <laughs> I guess pushed over. <laughs> yeah, so four, so four uploads, more or less weekly. And... Uh, yeah, I think, you know, to Viper's point, um, a lot of times you hear people say you need to be consistent on YouTube. And I think people make a mistake to think, okay, that just means upload consistently. Mm -hmm. But that's not the best definition of consistency. Consistency means consistent upload time, consistent message, consistent brand, consistent theme, and a consistent experience that people have with your content and so i think i could see why dan thought golf because there was three golf videos in a row but then as you kind of scan more you've got well, that seems like entertainment comment commentary um you've got like a review of a pocket knife and so um yeah i think figuring out that consistent theme would be one of the biggest ones saying that i do think that the thumbnails are some of them are pretty great simple readable um titles pretty good i mean what which putter is right for you it's a good video with decent traction kind of search based to it um but so different than everything else that's happening and i could also see yeah top the reason you'd think golf is because it's a golf ball with the chicken and um yeah i mean i think that's the opportunity because it looks like the quality of the content sure there's some tweaks here um that that this individual can put out some good content, good editing happening there. You got green screen, lots of jump cuts to hold attention, uh, but never upload a video that subscribers didn't subscribe for. So if if this could be a great golf channel, maybe that's the theme. Then go all in on on that, um, so that people aren't seeing maybe a snowboard video. If they're subscribing for golf and they have no interest in snowboarding then you're tearing down with that video what you're building up with the others. So, yeah, you pointed out so many good things there. I love what you said about consistency. Uh, that is a message I've also been trying to get across to everybody because the word consistent on YouTube always relates to publishing. And it, we never talk enough about like, no, consistent throughout. So great observation there. And I was noticing something myself. Now, tomorrow we're going to do a live stream where we talk about videos themselves. So we're going to go even deeper beyond what we're doing today, thumbnails, titles, things like that. And we're gonna click into your videos. And I'm noticing one thing, even with the sound muted, I'm noticing one thing about your video right now is that even 10, 11, 12 seconds into your video, you don't look at me once. Uh, at no point do you look at the lens. I think what's happening here is you have a monitor or a script somewhere down here and you are reading off of it. You are, you are paying way more attention to that than the audience. And this is just one of those things that takes practice, right? Like standing in front of camera, doing everything you need to do. I do this all the time when I'm streaming. I'm always kind of looking at the screen. I'm looking all over the place. Um, but when I'm recording a video, I sit down and I'll have my phone or something and I'll have my script on my phone. I'll read a couple lines from it, kind of think about how I want to reword it. And then I'll, I'll do a couple takes. And, and that works for me. You know, I don't get to consistently read or anything like that, but it works. The video comes out, I'm always looking at the audience. Um, I'm kind of wondering if there's a point where you look at the audience here and just listening it, you're definitely talking to the audience. You're definitely informing them of, of what you're trying to, uh, you know, the subject of the video and what you're trying to get across. But yeah, there's, there's no point where you look at us. And so if I were to give you one critique within the video itself, and we're going to talk even more about that kind of thing tomorrow. Um, that's what I would say is, is keep practicing being in front of camera. It's a good tip eye contact which is weird because you're talking to the lens right yeah uh it's just as awkward i found as, as looking at someone's eyes when you're talking to them it takes like that practice of like you know i got to get used to like making eye contact with people like when i grew up very shy so i didn't want to look at anybody <laughs> so it's again like it's it's the same thing with cameras like try and look directly at the lens um okay so that was the first channel that submitted on the non-gaming form I'm trying to figure out. I think this was the first channel that submitted on the gaming form. Uh, it is Son Cosson. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, they have almost 20,000 subscribers. 
and uh, they are making some shorts, but not many, mostly long form videos. So I'll start this one and just kind of take a look and try and see if I can understand what all they're doing on their channel, because we're seeing views from range from all over the place. We're seeing views in the hundreds and we're seeing views in the thousands. Uh, so already I'm thinking, well, what's the most popular content on this channel? Friday Night Funkin', Friday Night Funkin'. Uh, we have uh, some kind of Naruto video. It looks like this channel really was doing great a couple of years ago with Friday Night Funkin'. And when I see stuff like that, I kind of wonder, okay, what happened? Could it be that the game uh, started to get less popular and people aren't watching it as much? Uh, and then if so, uh, is this channel just trying to do whatever it can to figure out like, okay, well, I got to keep uploading. I like doing YouTube, but no one's watching this game anymore. So how do I continue being consistent? And it seems like they've kind of branched out all over the place. I'm seeing videos here where it looks like you're definitely not using... No, okay, it is games. It looked like it was just anime content. All right, so it is it is fighting games. It says news at the top. Definitely, you know, news and gameplay. Like they may be... And why did the video get 13,000 views on the second row there, the Sonic one? Why do you think... Uh, I mean, it's a game award, so it's kind of a news segment here. Ah, okay. Sonic Frontiers got robbed. My guess is that this was a trending topic they jumped on. So a lot of people probably felt strongly about Sonic Frontiers during the recent Game Awards. And you jumped on it at the right time and put a montage together of, I'm assuming the game getting robbed. Yeah, the Game Award from Clef Month, so that he probably uh, jumped on it right at the right time. So what do you guys think? I'm Usually what I would tell a channel like this is you you kind of are doing two different things here. News and gameplay. I'm glad you pointed that out because I was getting a little bit lost. So some of these videos are news videos that are about trending topics, and those did really well. And some sometimes you're just playing a game like Sonic versus Goku and Dragon Ball Fighters mod, or Dragon Ball Fighters. I guess it's a modded version of the game. You can see which videos are doing better. Nintendo just killed the Switch or the Switch Pro, 1.5k views. So another news video, over a thousand views. And then you talk about, you know, Fortnite. Season four, you know, Pokemon just replaced Ash. That's a big story. 2,000 views. Yeah, Dan, uh, I think you bring up a good point. It seems like the new content is what the people are coming to the channel for. So I would suggest to the creator that they lean more into the new uh, aspect of the gaming content because that's worth getting the most views. The other thing that I just want to reiterate to all of you all watching and listening real quick is that every time we upload a video to YouTube, we have access to precious real estate. Because that is a chance that you have to have people who have never seen your content before find you and discover you on YouTube. Hell, even outside of YouTube, people that may be searching for stuff on Google. So the reason why I say this is because I see that this creator has dedicated an entire video for a channel update. And I just feel like that is such a missed opportunity there. Um, if you're going to, if you want to have a channel update, put it in the community tab. Don't dedicate an entire video to a channel update because, again, that's one less chance that people have to discover you because new people don't care about your channel update because they, they're they not they're not in your family. They're not subscribed to your channel yet. When you're first starting out, most people that are watching your content are probably not subscribed to you, so a channel update video does little to nothing for them. So don't even waste that screen real or don't even waste that video real estate. Just hit them with another relevant video, and in your case, a relevant news video and bring in views and potential subscribers that way. Yeah, I completely agree. This is how I also feel about channel updates. It's it, there's the the harshest feedback I can give someone doing channel updates is I don't care. And mm -hmm. I'm saying that as just pretending to be your audience. Like if I'm subscribing for your news content or whatever it might be, I don't care cuz it's kind of one of two things. Either you're going to do more of the thing that I already subscribe for or you're about to tell me I'm done doing the thing that you subscribe for. That's usually what channel updates mean. Like it's one or the other. And in both cases, I'm going to catch on pretty quick based on the subsequent uploads. So it's just, it's really hard to care about that. I think a channel update is great for a community tab, Discord, subreddit, wherever your community is hanging out. Let them know. Those are your like diehard fans. They're the ones who care. They're the ones paying the most attention. The, your audience at large, the people who are not diehard fans, but they enjoy watching your stuff. They may subscribe. They, they keep coming back. They don't care. We would love for them to care. They don't care. 
that's just my my harshest criticism of channel update videos. So, uh, yeah, so I think that's that's the obvious choice here. More gameplay con or more gameplay content, but it could go on another channel. Um, if you're going to do gameplay content, I would say news content. That's what this channel is. That's the bread and butter. That's the stuff drawing in a lot of viewers. And people will subscribe for that. People will come to trust your take, your opinions, your research, and they will subscribe for that kind of content. And then you can invite them to check out your live streams on your other gameplay channel or Twitch or whatever it might be. Yep. All right. Uh, Viper, your first selection of the day uh, is Slavgard Manga. I hope I'm saying that right. Yeah. Uh, right. One of our mods. Yeah, exactly. I, I, as soon as I'm scrolling down the list of the channel, I'm like, wait a minute, that's one of our mods. So I picked it because I see him in the chat all the time and he's here now. So hello and thank you for being one of our mods, man. Awesome. So I'm going to be honest. I don't really know much about manga. But again, when I saw the channel name, I'm like, you know, what? we're going to we're going to put him on uh, on the spot. We're going to review his channel today. Um, The one thing that I see immediately, Slobgar, is that I feel like your thumbnails are a little too busy. Um, there's, You got a lot of uh, characters and pictures and things. And then some of these, you got too much tech. So the first piece of advice I want to offer you is make your thumbnail simp or simplify your thumbnail. Just uh, do less. Like I said in my podcast recently, with thumbnails, less is more. So you don't want to have too many elements and too many things going on in your thumbnail because it makes it harder for the viewer to understand what you're trying to uh, relate for that particular video. So I would say simplify your thumbnails. And that's my first big piece of advice to him or her. Sean, uh, do you have any familiarity with the side of YouTube? Um, click on a video. I'm just kind of curious. Like, is it uh, screen frames? Uh, and so this would be uh, Google Images animated, probably, unless they scan these themselves. Maybe they're grabbing images from uh, these are pretty high quality, right? So mm -hmm. I'm just curious where where do you think the content comes from? I think just based on the banner, it said lesser known manga reviews or manga. I, I'm so sorry. I mean, sorry. is she uh, or they grabbing um, screenshots? Because they're really crispy animated screenshots of like a, a physical book. Or do you get the images off of? I'm just curious. Yeah, my, my guess. Yeah, I'd be curious too. My, my guess is that they're taking images from the stories and using them. Just like just like this kind of putting a selection of them on YouTube, yeah. Um, I'd be a little worried about you know them coming after me, you know, copyright wise. Yeah, it could be. I wonder. That's that's a good scanner. It just you know what I mean. Unless you bl bl go brightness contrast, I mean, it's just really good, nice white and black. Just curious. I mean, it makes sense that the format makes sense. I've seen some. I mean, there's like the the channels that read complete ch children's books. Mm -hmm. And like they're doing pretty, they, these are huge. And I, I wonder if authors know. Yeah, so that's that's an interesting question. If you're using a piece of it, doing a piece of it, that that all makes sense. Um, what if we go popular? Um, uh, most popular video is old, but it's a review. It's interesting. I just think uh, so. Uh, I think that. Some of them, I, I think it proves that it can do well because I would say what there's a there's a proven audience for this. And I'm just thinking about the traffic source. So maybe is it that the viewer recommends um, the viewer recognizes the character um, is the title because I, I think the titles can maybe be improved, but certainly some of them are working and it's what traffic source are you going for? If it's lesser known, then I was wondering why the one that just got she may be a demon, but she's easy. The newer or back and recently uploaded oh, got sorry, sorry. I was like, OK, uh, maybe that character is recognized uh, because and, and thus you get the click through rate. And so to try to add value as far as a channel review is just the creator who understands the viewer best wins. So if you're knowing who you're talking to, what do they need to see? I agree with Viper, the simplicity of the thumbnail. That's a really good thumbnail. I, the full frame of, of the one character. And it also, as far as recency, is also outperforming in terms of views. And so my, I guess my, the point I'm getting to is that the viewer would know who she is. Right. And that right. the YouTube algorithm would then 
recommend that. I'd be and, and so for what it's worth, looking at your traffic on the back end to look at traffic sources. And I'm wondering if that's coming from if you're here too, I'm looking in the chat, if that's a uh, uh, homepage or uh, browse features um, or suggested videos. And yeah, I think that becomes some of the opportunity here is that if you can simplify down um, your thumbnails and your top, I still think the thumbnails could be stronger because like you go to that second, like she takes a licking and keeps on ticking manga. Like, what does that even mean? And I guess that is actually maybe won't take a lick. Namak, uh, Namaka Wanza won't take a licking is if that's actually the story the story, then maybe that could really blow up in terms of um, recommended, but maybe not. And that's why I'm popular. We saw that the top video was a review. I'm a real practical YouTube creator. I do like leaning on the concrete. Like we teach answer specific questions, review specific products, teach specific skills. So even when you're reviewing and then it's sort of a search based mentality, even though absolutely you should be tapping into. So what are the what is being searched for? What are the topics that are being searched for? What are the characters that are being searched for? I think if you use a search based mentality with like a modern homepage and browse feature suggested title thumbnail strategy, that's like what winning looks like in 2023, at least in terms of potentially new growth. That's some of my take. I'm not mm -hmm. super f familiar with, um, with the uh, the subject matter, but that's hopefully valuable. And I'm, I'll check you in the comments too to see if you have any thoughts about that. It makes three of us. I, I This is not a subject that I'm familiar with at all on YouTube, but I did, I was thinking about this for a bit and I do have an idea. Uh, and then one thing, one thing you said actually was some are popular because they turned into an anime. Um, this is exactly kind of what I was gonna get at in my critique here of your channel. Um, some of your videos, you're saying that you made this a while ago and then it turned into an anime, basically. And I'm saying that because you, in your banner, you are a self-proclaimed lesser known reviewer. You specifically target uh, stories that are lesser known. And I think that's cool. Um, so my immediate thing is like, maybe maybe these stories aren't known enough, so people aren't searching for them. So no one really knows these characters. No one knows these stories. And because they're not looking for them, you're not getting as many views as you would like. So obviously I would say, Oh, maybe you should do stories about more known characters and stories and things like that. But you would tell me, no, I, I cover lesser known stories. So hear me out if this is how you feel. I think one thing you could do to help bolster this channel is cover better known stories. But in those videos, and maybe you, maybe you post three lesser knowns and one better known, right? But these better known videos are designed to bring more viewers and build your base. So people, you're, you're bringing in more fans of this content at large. You know where to find them because you know the, the trending stories right now. You're bringing them in. And in those reviews where you're talking about really like awesome trending stories, you say, this one reminds me though of this lesser known manga. And I actually did a review of that. You can click right here and take a look. So you're starting to introduce people who are only fans of the mainstream stories to more of these lesser known stories. So now you're doing a service to this community of authors, right? So I I think that could be one strategy, one direction you can go. M introduce more content that of better known stories in this genre every so often. There we go. It's a brilliant strategy. Yeah, it's using the broad, broad appeal would be a huge strategy everybody watching should consider, right? YouTube. And it's, it feels like a contradiction because yes, you should have a focused topic and yes, there is power to being niched down. So then the question is though, how can you have broad appeal within your topic to get new growth so that people could discover your past, um, you know, uh, content. And then as your brand grows, um, people become, they view you as a source. You're the underground resource. This, you could apply it to music as well. Like if you want people to discover lesser known artists that are hard to find and harder to discover, they still need to find the channel in the first place. So maybe you're talking about all this underground hip hop. You still review the latest Drake album because people know Drake and, and then they could discover that there's a lot more under the surface than just the mainstream artists. So there you go. Uh, Slavkar, thank you so much for being one of our mods. You are awesome and uh, we appreciate you. 
I'm going to move on now to uh, Vicky Sunshine. Uh, Viper, this was another one of your picks. I tried to mix these up. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I didn't do a great job. I apologize. Yeah, so this one kind of tricky because I feel like uh, this creator needs more work on the actual content than the uh, the outer of the channel. But what I will say is that the thumbnail, for the most part, I like, but some of the text on the thumbnail is a little too small. So I feel like you might want to make the text a little bit bigger so people can see it. Because remember, you all, most people are watching YouTube on a mobile device, cell phone, tablet, small screen. So uh, when you're texting this small on a desktop, and we're on desktop right now, uh, it makes it almost impossible for them to see it on a mobile device. So just think about that. But this user, I think this user uh, have uh, more that we can talk about and more to look to on the actual content. So Dan, if you want to start the uh, Christmas brief video from the beginning, uh, we can start there. And I know this is not a video review, but this, right, for this particular channel, this is where the bulk of my my critique is going to come here. Um, so number one, we're <laughs> taking it to the video and there's a black screen. So what, what's really going on? And then... When we finally get off the black screen, we're greeted with a title card. Mm -hmm. Why do we have a title card when the title is right below the uh, actual the video there, the, 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 the player? And then, um, I don't know, uh, the, the majority of this particular video is just music playing as we watch them creating this reef. There's no narration. There's loud music. So the, my other critique is you really want to be careful with how loud the music is playing because sometimes it's too loud and then it's just not a comfortable viewing experience for a viewer. Uh, so about this particular video, that's where I'm at. Um, there, even though that's, even though the title card says how to do this crochet or whatever, there's no narration. There's no step-by-step -step of how to do it. We just watched them doing it throughout the 27 minutes of the video. And yeah, that's, that's just not going to work. Yeah. So about a minute and 40, the video actually kind of started. Uh, so we would recommend, generally speaking, not to do stuff like this. Um, it it kind of confuses the viewer who just clicked. They want to learn how to to make what you're making, and the video just doesn't start for a full minute. It kind of feels like maybe you made a mistake and you uploaded, you know, the wrong file. We're not really sure. Um, so yeah, again, uh, tomorrow definitely join us because we see stuff like this sometimes, and we uh we get, we're going to do a lot of advice on improving the content uh, itself. I was noticing the titles on this channel, and uh, they are very, they're very much resembling file names, you know, Christmas wreath. That seems like what you would name it on your computer, just remember what it is, but we would like to know a little bit more. What about a Christmas wreath? Because a Christmas wreath could be a lot of things, you know, so you're crocheting, how to crochet a Christmas wreath would be a much better title that's going to describe exactly what the video is about. Um, so yeah, I think that it could apply to a lot of these videos. Just, just some of that initial advice there. Um, Sean, do you have uh, anything to add there? Um, I go in a little bit deeper on titles. And if you want to actually just type Christmas, Christmas is also spelled wrong. But if we type Christmas wreath into vidIQ uh, AI title recommendations, here's some ones that came up for me. It'd be interesting to see this. And what's funny is, the mistake I think sometimes people can make though is the video is already done and then you do this. You actually should try to clarify your title um, before you press record because it would inf it might influence or it probably will influence what you even make th the video about. So when I typed in Christmas wreath to AI title or here we go, this this will be fun because you have a two word title, but now we've got a creative Christmas with DIY tutorial already. There's more meat on the bones. Like if, and, but it also create a beautiful Christmas wreath and three easy steps. If you clarify your title before you even record the video, you go, okay, let me think about what my three steps are, or actually it's going to be about five steps. And then you sit down and then to Viber's point, you could narrate over. You're like, the first thing I do is I get out all my materials. The second thing I do is I start to, you know, put them together like this. And, and then there's structure to the video. The title is clear for what people could expect. When I typed it in, there was one of how to make a Christmas wreath in five easy steps. This is what the AI title recommendation tool gave me. Here was interesting. Fourth of July wreath? No way. This hmm. Christmas wreath is epic. Like it's kind of a different <laughs> way of homemade Christmas wreath ideas with step-by-step -step photos. So... What's so powerful about planning out and structuring your content before you press record, it's it's too, it does a service to the viewer. The viewer now 
it, the whole idea is stronger. It helps you make your idea and your content stronger. It adds more value to the viewer. And then the net result of all of that too could be the growth that you're after in terms of your channel. And of course, titles, thumbnails, but I think um, that's what I would use. And I, that's one of the reasons why I love this tool is because it can help not just make a title after the fact better, but it really can help you in the ideation phase. So I want to piggyback off of that real quick because as Sean alluded to, it isn't very, very important to come up with your title first before you start recording because I take it to the first 30 seconds of the video and how important that intro is to, to provide that hook to get a viewer engaged in your video. When you have the title figured out, then you have a, a foundation for creating that first 30 seconds and getting them to be immediately engaged with the video. You have you have the, the foundation for that hook that will reel the viewer in. And you can much better establish that if you know what the title is. If you're if you're just recording and you don't know what the title is going to be, you might not have a good of a foundation or an idea of how to hook them in. But when you know what the message is supposed to be and you know how you want to, uh, what title is going to be and things like that, it makes it that much easier for that first 30 seconds for you to deliver that hook. Because remember what I tell you guys all the time, you want to deliver on the click as soon as humanly possible to get them engaged. And you can do that a lot easier, in my opinion, when you have your title already known before you hit record. One other thing that I want to encourage here, actually just for everybody watching and, and you know, Vicky, you're posting videos. It's about getting 1% better with every upload. Um, and, and it, the exciting thing is YouTube is a journey. We get to grow on that journey, but I want to challenge you and everybody watching, you know, in the top row, there was an upload three months ago, then one, two months ago, and then there's two in the last month. You got to post more videos too. Like one of the secrets to having success on YouTube in 2023 is uploading videos to YouTube in 2023. Thank you, everybody. Have a great <laughs> night. And so uh, for everybody watching, like, and and I know uh, I want to encourage everyone, keep submitting your channels for review, you know, keep seeking that feedback. And yes, you have a library of videos, but like, the, the price of entry to success on YouTube is consistently also uploading. I know we talked about branding and messaging and all that stuff, but it also frequency matters as well. And it, it's not about having a perfect upload schedule, um, but even one of the channels uh, that I submitted uh, from your submissions to uh, Dan, I can't wait to share it. I, I won't spoil it, but the, the amount of uploads just speaks to a level of hustle where it's kind of like the more videos you upload, the luckier, luckier you get. It's like the harder I work, the luckier I get. And so I do want to encourage everybody watching this, like put in the work this year, like put in that extra hustle. This isn't toxic hustle, hustle culture, but it's, it's also not apathy. We're not going to apathy. We it's, it's about, it's about, it takes hard work and it's sometimes you do want to quit and it's hard to create content and it is stress and being consistent, but uh, waiting for you on the other side of consistency this year and really uploading and doubling your upload schedule and whatever you can sustain personally is a lot of growth. And a lot of times channels that stay stuck are also not really consistent. So, uh, just some encouragement for you. Thank you, Sean. Uh, let's move on to the next one. Uh, I actually picked this one. Walt Disney World Central. They have 306 subscribers. And they have a lot of videos that are getting quite a few views. So first of all, I just want to give them props uh, because when you're getting 3,000 views and you have 300 subscribers, you're doing something right. Uh, this channel is a good demonstration of a lot of the things we talked about today. Nice, clear, simple thumbnails, uh, good titles, consistency. Uh, again, not just in their upload frequency, but in the type of content they're making. It's always appealing to the same type of audience. And you'll notice it's supposed to be Walt Disney World Central, but they know full well that people who are going to Disney parks are very likely also taking part, part in uh, Universal as well. They're going to check out the other parks in the area. Uh, so I think they're doing really well-rounded reviews and, and deep dives on different attractions and things like that. So I I was looking at this one like, oh, I don't have a, like a ton of advice off, off the jump for this channel, except for make more videos, keep going. Like this is an incredibly strong start for someone who started a year ago and uh, has consistently been uploading since. Can you click on one of the videos? Absolutely. Um, So I wonder too, like, okay, that's some really good. I know you guys are doing video reviews tomorrow, but like as far as that's a lot of one to two to three second 
clips changes in the opening um my guess too is what's i know a lot of travel channels feel constrained some people they're like it's an eight hour drive for me to get to a park and we go once every three months and we try to shoot all of our videos when when you realize like it's a lot of fair use and probably opc other people's content here in terms of photos and clips and being able to essentially do news right so there's a new theme park in texas a universal theme park so you pull a bunch of content together and 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 i think that's inspiring because what it does is it just doesn't a lot of times we can feel stuck we're like i'm a travel channel but i don't have any money to buy plane tickets you're like no there's no limit if you understand the tools as well as the laws as well as how to kind of dj and assemble content and this i i would assume it's what it appears that a lot of these are um is that they're delivering quality news with good editing and and uh of information that people care about and that's a great point you make dan they're punching way above their weight class in terms of views to subscribers and so let's hit that bit iq stats tab to see what we're looking at let's check it out go for green uh we got green all across the board that's what we always like to say go for green if you're if you're experiencing any growth just keep up the growth and the videos do look a little bit tough to make. That actually tells a good story because, well, some of my, oh, only two uploads, why well, I did 20? Yeah, but there too, look at all the editing that went into it, all of the different nuances where just because you go live twice and just sit there is different than actually really putting out and, and these videos are getting views commensurate, it would seem, for the effort and structure and research that probably went into them. I yeah, I just love the the work they're doing and I think they really really know their audience. I didn't look at this before. I just want to see. Okay, so they did one short about the Guardians of the Galaxy ride at Disney. Okay. I think you could do shorts as a way to cuz like when we talk about oh, what if you could post more? As Sean mentioned a little while ago, like everyone, you know, I challenge you to post a little bit more. These videos might take a very long time to make. That might be very intimidating, but shorts is a good opportunity because you can just take one or two interesting factoids from one of these long form videos and repackage them into a short. I would recommend re-recording personally uh, because I think you can make a short that is more catered to the shorts audience. If you just take a clip with not enough context, it'll kind of look weird and out of place when people find it. But, you know, sit down and like make a script for a 20 to 30 second video. And like, did you know that blah, 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 Disney Park, blah, 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 blah. Like just a quick, did you know, a couple little facts and you're in, you're out, you're done. If you can post those, you know, once a week or even more, I mean, you're going to see your views and subscribers continue to grow as well. And because that content is similar to the long form content you're doing, that too will start to bring people in because YouTube shorts viewers will get recommended your long form viewer, uh, videos when they start to sit down and watch long form. Sometimes they just log into the app. They just want, want to watch shorts that day. But sometimes they log in. They're sitting down with their their you know dinner. They're in front of the TV and they're like, okay, what well, I want to sit down and like watch like a ten minute video. And boom, here's your long form videos now. They remember watching you from shorts the other day, and they're gonna click because you're doing a really good job at covering the same type of content. So, shorts is a huge opportunity. Uh, I can't say it enough. I feel like a broken record ever since 2020 uh, or 2021 when shorts came on the scene. And we all just started saying in unison, like, make shorts, make shorts, make shorts. We're only going to say it more. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> we're, we're not going to start saying that less, uh, at least not me. So, uh, yeah, there you go. Th just such a solid channel. Uh, so thank you for submitting and uh, hopefully you got some value there. Uh, next, we have more channels, but we also have a ton of Super Chats. Uh, we want to get to some of these. As a quick reminder, Super Chats will not get you a channel review but you do you can submit on the form you do have a chance to get picked at random uh so thank you for uh, all of these questions and supers we have one here for 1999 from justin thank you so much uh we have hairs group thank you for doing these i just got monetized uh and your channel was a big part of that happening love to hear that thank you so much for the super and best of luck on your journey Philo Rogue, going off advice you guys have given, how do I create a thumbnail for a reaction video before I record? I'm really struggling to do this. One, I... you uh, take a lot of photos ahead of time, so you always have plenty of 
uh, photos of yourself doing things. And, uh, and so will you let me, uh, I don't know if it'll load you, here. You sure. Um, so if you could, you could get a piece of colored paper, um, gray is also a nice neutral, or if you have a gray wall, um, and you could just use your, uh, uh, you know, here we go. Can you see this one? Oh, is it a different window now? So anyways, you can see how many I, I have here. And uh, this was all one batch. And I haven't taken a thumbnail batch in like a year. I'm about to do a, like It's like once a year occurrence. <laughs> a lot of different faces, a couple different shirts and outfits. I had to redo it once I grow a beard. Um, and, and you could really figure out this thing in terms of you know, get some decent lighting. There's plenty of YouTube tutorials, but maybe a, a gray behind you. So it's kind of neutral. Then it makes it really easy in Canva to cut out. And then what you're reacting to, you could pull a screen grab from or whatever. So it's a good question. You just think about what are the assets that I need ahead of time. And then we're using StreamYard here. If you do a schedule live stream in StreamYard, you could push it to Twitch or anywhere in YouTube, wherever you want. You can upload the, the thumbnail then ahead of time. And it's just getting the thumbnail done. So you have the reaction, the game you're reacting to, or an, an image from the game or a screen grab. And so it's just a matter of actually gathering the assets and having them ahead of time. And potentially it could be frustrating if you sit down even in front of your webcam and lighting, you're like, that's oh, not quite right, or my background's busy or something like that. Thus, having those isolated out photos um, for the use of that and anything else. It's the batch producing thinking that has you just having all those assets when it's it's hard to get it right or the lighting's not quite right and uh, you've done them all at once. And so, yeah, that's probably the best way to do it. Reaction channels, I, I have to imagine too, just thinking about like a title ahead of time, you only get like a hint, right? You can't watch the video before you react to the video. Otherwise it will be an inauthentic reaction video, right? Which. I'm, maybe some channels actually do that, you know, but if you're trying to have like an authentic reaction, I, I will say you probably know ahead of time what kind of videos you're reacting to. You probably know ahead of time the names of those videos, the thumbnails that they have. So you could take a little bit of inspiration off of that. But the whole idea of creating your title and thumbnail first, especially title, is it, it just helps you understand, okay, someone's going to click on this video after reading the title blank, okay? What is the first thing they should see? What is the first thing I should say? And it helps sync you up with the viewer. That's kind of how I like to think of it. The viewer is thinking one thing because they read only your title and thumbnail. They have no idea what's inside the video. And you want to make sure your thinking is in line with theirs. So some channels, reaction channels, maybe that's a bit harder to do. There's no one that's going to police this though. So if you come up with a title and a thumbnail first and you're feeling really solid, you get into the video and it just takes a turn and it no longer makes sense to have the title and thumbnail, change it. No one's yeah. no one's policing you here. That was my thing. Like, I mean, I know it's a little bit different for reaction video, but you once you react to the video and you go into the editing board and you're editing and all that stuff, you know what your reaction is going to be. So at that point, this might be the one time where I would uh, advise create the thumbnail after the video because you know what the reaction is going to be. So you can have the shock face, the confused face, the sad face, the, the pleasantly surprised face. So, but... Obviously, you can't really get that until after you uh, watch it and edit it and all that stuff. But yeah, I, I would say um, just make a face depending on what your reaction is and then just add a, little, a couple of more elements to the thumbnail and you're good to go. Yeah, and you save those assets ahead of time. Like Sean said, it's going to be so much easier for you because you're going to you know, you're going to have a certain reaction in your mind. Maybe you didn't make the face you wanted to make, so you can't pull it out of the video, right? But you already spent a day taking all these different pictures and now you have exactly the facial expression you want. Um, you'll notice if you go on big YouTube channels, you'll see um, you'll see the same faces used. We do it all the time. Sean, I'm sure you do it too. You just showed us your your batch of clips there. You'll notice that people have used the same one and they've changed a few other elements in the that people do it all the time. And it's just really nice to have those nice clean images ready to go. You know what's so, funny is I know there was a while too where where PewDiePie reacted to and still does, but to like you know, Dr. Phil stuff or different, his meme show. And it was even a meme in and of itself that he used like the same photo of himself in every, almost every thumbnail. And it was kind of like one of the top performing. Um, I was actually just 
on Hope Scope's channel. She spoke at Vid Summit. I don't know her super well, but if you you could share a screen, it, it was it was just observing, and I was like, wow, she really found that face that worked because her so many different. They're all very distinct and different thumbnails, and there's a few difference differences. But she basically found like the one face pretty neutral. It's kind of a neutral, very you know consistent, and and the, she deviates that at times, but it's a very consistent face. And so all that to say too is that you could have that. And as I read the question, I mean, you get it done. You could have that ahead of time. But if you're recording it, you're gonna make the thumbnail after. So that's that's the other option. It's like. I, I was I was thinking, assuming you're going live and you don't know what your reaction is going to be. Oh yeah. Um, that that Hope Scope face is pretty good because you're not even really sure where she's going. She's just kind of shocked. It's kind of just a neutral. It's not overdone, and I, there's been a lot of testing there. I mean, her she got 41 million views in the last 30, 28 days or something like that. Pretty gnarly. So, anyways, I hope that all that's helpful. But I mean, if you're now done with the video, you certainly could now create the proper thumbnail knowing what happened. You reacted authentically during it, but now you could think of maybe some creativity that happens after. Because if it's scheduled and uploaded, then you have uh, the ability to do all of that. But based on my tips, you could also do it live and just kind of maybe have sort of a neutral react face. If you look in PewDiePie's library, it, his same kind of one, he just had this one that he kept using and it was, you know, the best performing, which was, it's not bad to reuse the same face. Somebody uh, in the chat was saying that if you, uh, if you just have a generic react, uh, title that says something about reaction, uh, people won't care if you don't, if you, uh, no, they said people won't care if you put what your reaction is in the actual title. And I would argue with that. If you're just having a generic title and it just says such and such reaction, I'm not, as a viewer, I'm not that interested. I need to know ahead of time what your reaction is going to be, or at least a little bit of an idea which way you're leaning. Because if you got like a shock or horrible reaction, and I'm going to be more curious, like, wow, why did you think that way? Or if you if you if you think something's good, then I'm going to want to know why you thought it was good. So I kind of feel like it's not bad to give the viewer a little bit of a sense of direction or which way you're leaning when you do a reaction title. But that's me. Reminds me of a video I've been pushed a couple times now. Uh, let me see if I can find it real quick because it's a good, yeah, okay. So, reaction video here, Atriox channel. Um, actual Hitman reacts to Hitman gameplay. And you'll see here the thumbnail. It's literally the, <laughs> this is not realistic. You know, that the just the text there kind of giving away a little bit of the video, right? Like, that's not realistic. So, we already know ahead of time that uh, this actual Hitman has some thoughts. And it makes me more intrigued to click. I'm more interested in this video now because of that that whole idea that uh, not only are they going to react to it, they have some very strong thoughts. Mm -hmm. I've played Hitman. It's actually kind of funny. So that the whole concept's really great. But anyway, just, just uh, some inspiration there for you. Um, we have a couple more before we get back to uh, channel reviews, though. Uh, so quotation by Rico says, I hope this week is my week for a review. You guys are doing great videos and shorts. Thank you so much. Uh, if you have a moment, could you review mine? Uh, started a couple months ago. Love your content. Uh, we can't sell channel reviews. Uh, we appreciate the super. We hope to find uh, your channel pop up soon. Um, you know, having just started though, you're in the right place. I certainly was not looking up YouTube growth videos when I started on YouTube. I kind of went in, you know, completely unaware of what the heck I was doing. And uh, the fact that you're here and you're seeking education uh, on YouTube is already you're a million steps ahead of so many creators. Uh, real quick before we uh, proceed, Dan, if you all want a chance to have your channel reviewed, there is a form or a couple of forms in the description. So go down to the description and click on the appropriate form because there's a gaming form and a non-gaming form. Mm -hmm. If you click on the wrong one and we find out the channel's the wrong one, we might make fun of you. We might roast you on, on the street. <laughs> we're just saying. <laughs> click the right I, one. I saw someone, someone earlier asked if they're a game development channel, what form? And I, I went ahead and responded to them and said... If you're a game developer, you're not technically a gaming channel in our eyes. But if you were to post on the gaming forum, it's okay. Like little things like that, we understand. But uh, sometimes people just post on both and cross their fingers, and you know you'll get skipped if you post on the wrong one. <laughs> um, and then Crazy Chickens, who we audited earlier, said well, they're working on editing and being on camera. Originally, they were an interactive gaming channel for ten years. Uh, they're going to build a new channel and then decide what needs to do. So good luck, All right. and thank you for letting us know. Um, we have a few more supers. We'll get to those in a little while. But first, let's get back to some 
reviews. Uh, Sean, you picked this one. It's Practice With Me, Multiple Instrument... Oh, yeah, it's Practice With Me Music. Sorry, I was reading the banner. There we go. Yeah, so uh, first first thing is if you hit the vidIQ stats, I just want to acknowledge, I mentioned this earlier, we got 120 videos published in um, this last 28 days. And... Um, I can't get it open. Um control minus to be slightly more zoomed out first. Oh, yep. Okay. There we go. Um, 120 uploads shorts, definitely pumping them out. Um, and, and even, I mean, we have 88 subscribers, but the channel got 12,226 views. Wow. And so I do want to encourage people just the volume play. Um, there's, I think, I sometimes think you could go to the extreme. Like I look at it and I'm like, maybe, 50 uploads with a little bit more detail attention to detail with some of them could be interesting if you go to shorts i was looking at at shorts and there's a video that's a moment of magic over there and it looks like they just kind of go up and down on the keys while there's sparkles on the screen and it um that's it it just is sort of like but at the same time i'm not trying to be critical it's still got 305 views and so it's your experience, like what is cool is you do have the opportunity, I suppose, of shorts to pump out a lot of content. Like that wasn't, it doesn't seem like that was super hard for you to make and you got 305 views, you're able, you're, you're taking massive action. So I think, um, I think that there's a lot of cool things happening here. So if we go to videos now, I suppose, um, one, I like that, uh, practice with me seems clear. The musical instruments make sense gives you a really cool world to play in, um, you know, no pun intended, like literally just to practice music in it understands if someone's interested in this, they want to maybe learn piano, you're doing some how to play B minor chord, uh, all the above. So I like the niche. I think it's, it's practical and I like to see all the hustle. Um, I think that we'd probably all agree these thumbnails could, uh, maybe use some help especially the keys ones that if we go to yeah these ones one they kind of all disappear together but two the fact that you see the keys and you also see a whole nother set of keys with yes the blue notes but that's a lot to look at then you see a little bit of the sheet music was kind of hard to read and then you see the b minor chord and i guess it's the, so i think that um if dan could you search piano tutorial just those two uh and and we just maybe success leaves clues looking at some of the other thumbnails that top one is definitely zoomed in more um if you do see one where you've got the individual it's easy this 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 first piano lesson is a little busy the fly me to the moon is nice you have the one set of keys the green and the orange and the song that you're going to be learning um and so I think consider taking some time to research and consider, okay, let's scroll down a little bit more. How, do, what kind of photos would I want or what kind of thumbnail styles would I even want to create? And how can I take something complex and make it as simple as possible? Um, and so those are a few thoughts, but what do y'all think? These are great examples. And I think the thumbnails that a lot of these channels are using are very on trend. A lot of them do that forgive the old data reference here a lot of the, them do this guitar hero style way of teaching right and you could this is interesting because you could literally put your tablet or phone on your keyboard and follow along with this if you want to and i have to imagine just getting hands on like that with the person watching the video like i think they'd really appreciate being able to you know do that so that's this, crazy watch time too that's the yeah. kind of thing it's kind of like a yoga video that's 20 minutes long like if the person's gonna do it they're probably doing the entire thing you get 100 percent completion and uh because they're playing along and i think also tapping into the trending music because if you have christina perry a thousand years 4.4 million views like that is people going back to it watching it again and again you get to have her in the thumbnail yep. and uh anyways back to you this is what we tell music channels uh, all the time when we come across this. If you can capture a trending song and you're playing the song, you're showing people how to play the song, or it's just you doing a cover of it, that's going to do you so many more favors than just kind of playing 
you know any song you like think of or a song you're com- comfortable with i think on youtube in the music space you want to become you know familiar with these more trending songs like and and learn to play them so that you can bring them to your channel because look at this video like almost a million views as of a few weeks ago and yeah it's it's awesome. So there's a, a lot of really good examples here from just typing in the words piano tutorial, which it does seem like our hero channel here is trying to do. They're trying to, you know, give people these tutorials. But your competition is a bit ahead of you, just given the the nice simplicity of not only the thumbnails, but the actual videos themselves. Like, I think for me, and I'm, I'm not trying to discourage this creator or anything, but for me, this is really, really easy to follow. Um but when I click on your videos, and I don't have any sound, so forgive me, but this is a little bit harder for me to follow. I see the keys lighting up as you're pushing them, but you're, first of all, the, the camera is a bit lopsided, the one on your actual keyboard. It's it's really hard for me to like focus because it's just kind of like, I feel like the ro- it's just going to slide off the camera at any mo- moment, like your room's tilted. Um, and there's a lot of things I should look at. Should I look at these keys down here? Should I look at your fingers playing these keys up here? Or should I look at the notes? popping up on the screen here. Um, so it's it's just kind of a lot of information to take in. So can you simplify this? Can you learn how to do the, those animated piano videos that you're seeing from other channels? Like I would be looking to learn that skill. Like, you know, you may look at that and go, how the heck do I do that? And anytime you're on YouTube and you're trying to improve your content and you see someone else doing something that is working and it looks awesome and you're intimidated, you should go out and try and learn that skill. If, whether it's animating or maybe it's just a program that they're using, like you never know until you start searching around and digging deeper. Cause I've seen a lot of channels use that style for teaching piano and just making really awesome, visually appealing piano videos. So that is, yeah, a lot of good observations. There's just from typing the words piano tutorial. So do some research. Um, and then you're using this, uh, this board here. I don't know what this is called. I'm sure it's a very popular thing. I don't know what it is. So forgive me, but, uh, you're, you know, you're also doing tutorials on this. I think it's great that you are, you know, going the tutorial route, but we definitely need to see, yeah, improvements in your thumbnails. And uh, I think it's going to go deeper too. It's going to be the content itself. Is it easy to follow? So there you go. Um, that is everything I've got for practice music for me. If no one has anything else, we can move on. I mean, another thing, just simple tip for everybody watching too, as far as, you know, let's see. Channel started in 2021 um, and pumping out a lot of content, making nice traction. Most popular video, though, 181 views. Most viewed video of all time, short, 1,900 views. So there's echoing a message that y'all continue to hear, but definitely it's worth embr- embracing shorts, especially for reach, growth, simplicity of creation. And so, um, yeah, I mean that shorts are getting views and and of course not all views are created equal, right? Yeah. There's differences, but I think that 100% of people here should be asking how can I be creating shorts? In fact, let's do a live chat interaction. I'm watching you. Have you posted a short yes or no? Have you posted a short yet on your channel? Yes or no? Drop it in the uh live chat as we keep it moving today. All right. Uh Shiana Warren, hopefully I'm saying that name right. Uh, they do gig work life videos. I, I actually picked this one and I thought it resembled some of the channels I've seen lately that talk about doing side hustles and mo- like the amount of money you can make doing DoorDash versus some other service or something like that. And this channel seems similar to me, but a little bit different uh, in that they tell a lot of stories about themselves and situations they've gotten into. My Uber Eats nightmare, I ruined my customer's meal. Uh, is taking a triple stack Uber Eats delivery worth it? Here's what I experienced. Like, I, I like these titles a lot, and I think they uh, describe really well the video. They add some drama, some curiosity. Uh, in that regard, I was going to give the advice of thumbnails. I, I think that they're very simple, but uh, they are, they're missing something. I, I think, like, sometimes, you know, the colors just look a little bit washed out, um, the, the stark white background is just kind of, eh, you know, it, it's a little bit boring to me. I think like a nice gradient or something like that could, could, you know, improve these a lot. Um, and I do think that, you know, I wouldn't normally suggest this, but sometimes I feel like the thumbnails need 
a little bit more clarity. Like I wouldn't normally say you should put the logo to the thing you're talking about in the thumbnail, but in this case, there's not a lot of ways to visualize Uber Eats. You could do like a bag of food uh, or you could do like the logo. So you have it here in the corner, but what if it was like, you know, triple and instead of this delivery button you have here, what if it was the Uber Eats logo, like kind of tilted and, and larger underneath the word triple, you know? Uh, so little things like that to help just when people see your thumbnail before they read your title. So they know immediately like, oh, okay. They took a triple Uber Eats delivery. Got it. Little things like that could help a lot. And the other piece of advice I had for this channel was that I think it's great to tell your stories and I think you should keep doing that. But could you also do some of the videos like I was talking about before where you discuss the DoorDash acceptance rate reset so worth it question mark this feels like you're going to explain something to people who might be considering being doordash drivers or they're having an experience that is less than favorable with doordash uh can you do more videos like that where it's less about you and your story and more about you know the people watching and you can interlace your story in those videos you can you can include like anecdotes and things like that but can you give people you know a little more value in terms of like okay I like I'm going to search for how to become a DoorDash driver or is being a DoorDash driver worth it? Um, your story plays into that, but I, I haven't seen too many videos here that kind of scratch that itch for me. I want to see more videos that are a little more value driven so you can get some new viewers on your channel. So those are my thoughts. Um, Viper, are you seeing anything here? You pretty much took all the thoughts that I had. The thumbnails are really what caught my eye, not in really the best way. They just they just come off and bland to me. There's no context. I mean, I do appreciate the fact that the text is large and very readable and easy to read and all that stuff. But the white background or just you in the car, that doesn't really do much for me as far as being interested in the thumbnail. So I just need a little bit more going on in the thumbnail. Maybe add some provided context or some background scenery. Maybe maybe use a picture of you in one of these establishments that you're going to pick up food from. Uh, just something different from the... Because the, a lot of these thumbnails look the same, too. And that's also a danger. When somebody comes on your page and all your thumbnails look the same, it kind of throws the viewer off a little bit. So you need to we need some, to change it up a little bit. Add, add some, some thoughts to these thumbnails. So that would be my critique. Sean, uh, any thoughts before we move on? Yeah, uh just to circle back to, I think, just a practical tip tip and homework for everybody watching today is, one, I just really respect the hustle because I could see it would seem that you're also making some videos while you're out, you know, doing the gig work as well. And so sometimes that's happening at night. The thumbnail is being taken at night. You just having the foresight to batch produce, recognizing that your, your faces are going to be or your emotions are going to be pretty consistent between 10 to 15 maybe different expressions. Um, and I, uh, you can get like a, a six by nine solid gray portrait backdrop on Amazon for 20 bucks, um, and, and work to get your lighting proper. So, or, or use daylight or something and, and the foresight, because I think probably sometimes one of the reasons why some of them are a little bit faded is because you're actually taking the thumbnail maybe at night during the creation of the content versus doing it when the conditions are best. One other just tip, and if this is your own personal brand, but I think everybody could benefit from it's uh, the, the little known talked about fact of how can we stand out online? Like Viper wears sunglasses. So like Viper, it's kind of, it's a brand point actually. So he's, yeah. he's wearing sunglasses. I wear the think hat a lot. Um, and even gray on gray, if that's your thing, that's totally fine. Make the photos crispy. But I think it could be interesting. One of the things we're just trying to get my attention, it would be like, maybe you always wear an orange hat and then you always wear an orange beanie. Like, not that you have to change anything. You also have that camo hat. But even thinking about that, because all we have to do in the thumbnail is like gray on gray, white background. And so if you've got a crispy photo, easily to cut yourself out, on Canva because you go home and you don't have to buy a backdrop, but it's, it is helpful. You get the lighting right. Um, or some gray paper is just kind of a nice neutral, um, and, and, uh, get a bunch of photos on your phone. If you, even your droid or iPhone, you can bump up saturation and everything, and then just save those. So you're able to use them in the future. Um, and then, yeah, that, that could really help that pop. And, uh, I think, 
the other thing I, I would imagine you're leading into this, and I don't know what the opportunities are today, but just for sort of the business opportunity, there's like the rideshare guy blog. Um, I know that there's been many different eras of like Uber, but there was a point in time when in Vegas, uh, one of my hometowns, uh, they were paying like two grand for new drivers and like they were paying like referral fees that were just off the charts. And I know that's not this exact moment, but I know there is r referrals of new drivers sign up. There is um, maybe other tools. And, and so just thinking about ways to monetize the ride share, as you're sharing your answer, sharing what you know, it could be, I know people accessorize their vehicle. Maybe you've got different charger cables, like the best charger cable for your guest that won't break because, uh, you know, and it's extra long or whatever. And there's some ways that you could really monetize here because again, back to, I see that you've got that extreme ambition of hustling on the gig, big gig work, pumping out the videos. You start increasing those dollars, gives you money to reinvest in, in the business, but also potentially reach that freedom. I'm sure you're, you're driving for as well, where maybe you can lean more into the YouTube channel and the tips, but I love this. It actually reminds me when in 2010, nine, when I started think media, I was going to red Robin um, to wait tables at, at a restaurant. And I, I mounted my droid X on my dash and made videos like how to build a video editing PC. And I, sh and I wrote like 12 notes that I shared on the way to work. No excuses, like times to, you know, to get out content that was somewhat structured. So I really respect the hustle, just getting 1% better with every upload. And to, I think Dan's point, um, making it, even value based and and how to bait there's this is a very searched industry you have a lot of knowledge you share your mistakes biggest mistakes you made tips quick hacks i see you're doing that and so i just want to encourage you to double down keep doing what you're doing and uh hopefully some of these tips have been valuable all right uh we have another one here i believe sean you picked this one it was facts direct yeah, so Facts Direct seems to be, uh, it's a shorts only channel. They have uh, committed to that. So that's the only thing they're uploading. I think that's an interesting uh, value prop and an angle to learn from. Um, and uh, it's cool to see that, again, how good shorts can do. They're consistently getting over a thousand views. Um, I believe it's a relatively new channel. And uh, I'm going to pull it up. I would love your thoughts. I'm going to pull it up here. Um, as well to look on it on my end. I'll come um, back, come back to me. So yeah, I, I thought uh, just the images that have been captured that have kind of turned into the thumbnails are really, really interesting. And for those of you who don't know, you can actually take shorts from your phone. If you upload them through YouTube's app on your phone, you get to select the thumbnail. Uh, that is an option that you have. Hopefully it's coming to desktop eventually, uh, but you might be picking these, I think you're doing a really good job because if these end up showing up on the home feed, on the short shelf there, you know, seeing a whale and says 80 years old, it's just kind of intriguing. Interesting facts about killer whales. Uh, so there's one of the facts right there. So I think even shorts creators can like play into the strategy. Not, not always will your shorts be here on the home feed, you know, very easy to click where people are like looking for you know, the, the specific thumbnail or anything, because you're going to click on one of these and you're just going to start scrolling. But when you do have that opportunity to be here, you want to stand out if possible. My, I've completely lost your channel. Here it is. Um, are you ready? <laughs> um, you know, it's also wild if you go to the stats is yeah. this is something to celebrate. 837,467% thousand <laughs> growth in the last 28 days. That's a, that's massive. And so clearly you've had some breakout videos. So success leaves clues. Good to repeat, you know, some of the things that you've been doing. Um, amazing facts, space facts. You didn't know part two. Um, if you go to popular, um, amazing facts, 1 million earths. And to that point, these are really good thumbnails, like 1 yeah. million earths. Like, like, tell me more about that. Crazy facts about pizza. I also like that you've picked out a niche, like it's unlimited. There's unlimited facts of interest. Shorts is a good way to distribute these facts quickly. And um, congrats on the growth that you've had in the last um, 28 days in particular, because it's one of those things of, of doubling down and 
and trying to do, you know, more of the same and then scale. And I think that speaks to maybe I want to encourage everybody watching as well. Some of you might be discouraged because maybe you're not having that kind of, you know, momentum. But at the other side, one, there's still only 71 subscribers here. And I'm sure everybody wants to get to a thousand. Everybody wants a silver play button. Two, though, when you do have momentum, I just want to encourage you just don't quit. Just, you know, keep keep it going. Just keep it posting and even double down when you feel that that momentum. And this last 28 days has been super significant. And so uh, I like to and and then hold that in in tension, because if we just do the math, chances are you're going to probably get 100 subscribers a month. It should be exponential, mm -hmm. but you'll have a thousand this year for sure. Um maybe in the next six or three months, if you continue up this pace and you're one short away, I would say in regards to the videos you're creating here from probably having an absolute banger, it would seem in the facts direct niche with what you're doing. It's also AI. It's also, sorry, what? You could have using there. AI voice, AI voice. I wanted yeah, I wanted to listen to one of these. Um, I wonder what kind of editing. I mean, this it does seem like you went to like Chat GPT and said, "Give me ten facts about space." So you had an AI generator <laughs> read it, and then. Dan, but you I mean, have the hey, sound on? I can't, I can't I, hear you. I, sorry, yeah, I don't have the sound on today. Okay, I, I was just going to back up what Sean's saying because yeah, it is it is that robot voice. We talk about this sometimes during video reviews. When as soon as I hear that robot voice, I get really swipey <laughs> i yeah. swipe away from the short i don't want to hear that i want to hear a person um or a better robot voice that tricks me into thinking it's a person yeah or a great robot voice yeah i was gonna say besides that though i think you should get somebody to voice these whether it's going to be you or someone you find on five or whatever um i thought this started a little bit slow just just on the subject of like shorts advice specifically facts you didn't know about killer whales and then there's some music and then the first fact comes up. So it, it's kind of like this slow paced yet short video. And I think people's attention spans are just a little bit shorter than that. I think you should have hit us with, did you know, and then get into the first fact. Saying, did you know, you'll notice if you start listening for it while you're watching shorts, count how many shorts you watch in a session that start with the words, did you know? Yeah. It's or insane. You won't believe. Yeah. Yep. You like, won't believe. Yeah. Cause, and you use a big, you, you're, yep. you're speaking right to the viewer in that moment in terms of the short, like you won't believe this about killer whales, you yeah. know? And, uh, that's a great point. And I think that, um, uh, the AI voice thing, by the way, is also YouTube's kind of cracking down. Like they're kind of oh. sometimes disallowing maybe monetization they are disallowing some what appear to be ai only channels it's not that you also can't lean into a lot of ai tools but it is it's it's gonna be a fascinating journey where these are there's a lot of opportunity to maybe create kind of this whole faceless youtube automation type of thing at the same time it's being kind of cracked down upon i'm not sure if y'all have any advice on that but uh thoughts on that i there was a there was an individual who got their channel to monetization qualification in terms of hours and subscribers, but was disallowed because it was entirely AI voice. And so went back through to your point to up the quality of the content to reapply for the partner program. Yeah, I think I, I didn't know that was happening. I'm not too surprised because I think if you're YouTube, you got to watch out for plagiarism, you know, and it it's becoming a whole thing like it's maybe because i'm interested in these stories but my phone is pushing me a new story every day about a student who wrote a paper using chat gpt and got busted or you know someone who wrote a blog and they use chat gpt and they got busted for plagiarism so it's youtube is kind of in a weird spot right now because everyone's using this stuff to help write their scripts and things like that if you don't alter enough if you just try and make a 100 percent ai channel i have to imagine you start to run into mm -hmm. some of those issues and then you're, you bump up against community guidelines. You don't really realize it. And then you go to get monetized and they're like, can't monetize this. This isn't yours. And you, you never even considered, you know, Oh gosh. And I'm not saying everyone, anyone's doing this nefariously. I'm saying that it's very easy to take chat GPT or something like that and just take what it says and put it in your script. But you should, you should run it through a couple times. You should be, you should ask it to give you a different tone and then you should take your own tone and like add to the script and, and change it up in your own way. 
Um, cause I encourage people to use tools to make their life easier, but you don't want to come across like, you know, Oh, well, I accidentally stole this content. Oops. Mm-hmm. Yep. And in the meantime, if this is super sustainable, shoot, you might even have an AI video editor happening here, uh, which is, you know, uh, who knows? I think it'd be interesting to circle back to see if you can get monetized because I guess it's an arbitrage game. I've I've already done this thought exercise of AI meets software meets a little bit of computer programming and just chat GPT and video edit, AI video editing software and royalty free music and stock photos and stock photography and all that you, you pair it all together. And why couldn't robots be uploading 50 videos a day and, uh, a couple of them break out and eventually you have a YouTube channel that's generating one, two, three, four, five K a month in ad revenue. Um, however, that level of spam, I mean, it's not real, but you know, kind of, and I, there might already be somebody that's pulling this off or they're doing it p- pure uh, with the grit and the hustle of, of all the above. And so it's just, that's maybe just an interesting caution. You stay on this path, you keep pumping this out. If you can maintain this growth, you, you hit, you hit a thousand subscribers and you might hit 10 million views and then you might be able to start monetizing, but it'd be frustrating if you're like, oh, they say, actually, we, we don't want to approve this for the partner program because of the nature of the content. So there's just a little foresight to consider. So speaking of uh, AI and using it to help you uh, with what you're doing, we have our own chat GPT like program, but we trained it on YouTube growth. So if you want, if you have vidIQ account, you have access to this early preview of our AI coach. I've already loaded up with a prompt here just to show you just an example of what you could use this for. We looked at a channel that was covering Disney parks and stuff earlier. So I said, write a, write a script for a YouTube video about ways someone could ride as many rides as possible during their next trip to Disney World. You're going to ask it. It's going to think about it for a second. And then it's going to generate a script that, going back to our point a minute ago, you probably should not just take word for word. But, uh, you know, it'll get you started. I can help with that. Here's an idea for a YouTube script about basically my prompt. Uh, Welcome to your next trip to Disney World. Everyone loves to have a great time when visiting Disney World, but most of us also want to get the most out of our trip. In this video, I'm going to share with you some tips and tricks how to maximize the number of rides you can go on during your vacation. Talk about planning ahead. Consider visiting a park more than once. Take advantage of nights at parks. Though already... This thing is like giving me some great ideas for at the very least an outline to a video that I could make if I'm a channel that is trying to give tips and tricks for people going on vacation to one of these fun theme parks. So there you go. It's our AI coach. Uh, If you have a vidIQ account, you can check this out right now. Um, While it's in the early preview, it is available to all levels of our vidIQ subscription. Um, Oh, no. Oops. If you don't have a vidIQ subscription and you're thinking about it, uh, it looks like I accidentally clicked on our secret link. I didn't mean to do that. I hope no one goes to vidIQ.com slash secret page and takes advantage of this $1 deal or I could get in big, big trouble with my boss. The link might be down below, but hopefully not for the sake of my job. Uh, But there you go. You can start with vidIQ Boost for a dollar right now. Link is down below. There you go. All right, Dan, before we uh, move on to the random pick for today, let's uh, handle a couple more super chats here. So we got one from Toxic Tangent, uh, 11.8K sub from short, not related to channel content podcast. Should I start a new channel for long form or pivot on this one algorithm wise? Hey, Toxic, look at short. They're your captain now, bro. <laughs> okay, they're your captain. So what you got to do, you got to just keep on with the shorts, man, because shorts have taken over that channel. So if you still want to do long form, you might want to start a new channel for long form because the shorts have officially taken over your channel, my dude. <laughs> over with it's over for your long form content it's done that's my advice all uh, right nick oh boy dan oh sorry i was I, I was just like getting my bearings because i'm getting ready for the next segment uh did not get monetized because reuse content oh uh oh yeah one mm-hmm. of the reuse videos got 13 million views if i delete Ooh. it can uh, i can't reapply for monetization what should i do oh if i delete it i can't oh because it would disqualify you in terms of oh, watch yeah. time well, what you should do, I think you could still apply and maybe that video is disqualified, but you could still get the channel qualified. It's not necessarily that you have to delete old videos. I could be wrong. I, I'm thinking of this other case study, but I think it's like the future is forward. They're trying to create a new body of work for YouTube to evaluate. 
And yeah, it's, that's a good question. I don't know if y'all have a take, but so if this video is the reason why you can't, can't be monetized, what you may have to do is private it. Once you private it, all that data is gone. Um, so then you can kind of read that and then you can build it back up to where it's, I guess I would say legally eligible for monetization. And then maybe YouTube will accept it. Um, once it's private, or you might even have to. Do, oh no, you think you delete it? You can't reapply. Yeah, but the, well, then well, just you'd have to re-get the watch time. The watch time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, that, you're that's what you got to do anyway. <laughs> you got to do it anyway, right? Like yeah. you're already the worst case scenario. You're in that position already. So yeah, I I would I would do my best not to do that again. Hopefully during this journey though, you've kind of learned some stuff just about YouTube and what's working for audiences. And when you yep. go and make content that is seen as more original, that isn't going to get you into trouble. Um. It should be easier for you this first time than this first time around. You kind of were climbing this mountain and then you had something take off. Well, now you've learned, hopefully, from that data. Look into that data. Uh, look at the thumbnail and the title objectively and uh, keep on creating. There you go. Next up, we got Night Thunder Adventures. Thank you for the $5. They say converting a bus to a house and don't want channel to crash when I pivot from DYI to travel, uh, including vlog style now, so it's not much of a pivot. So I'm imagining like a, a van lifestyle channel where the, you're starting with the build of the actual thing you're going to live in, right? So it starts it starts as a DIY channel because it's mostly construction, right? I would say personally, I've watched a lot of channels, van life channels in the past, and that's exactly how I started watching them because I was like, oh, how are they going to deck out this van or this bus? And when they started going on the journey and actually using it day to day, I was interested. I wasn't automatically turned off by that because as long as you're honest in your content about what it is you're trying to do your core audience that's following is probably anticipating and they're looking forward to the day that you drive it off so i don't know i think that normally we say oh don't don't branch out don't you know be careful i kind of feel like this makes sense to me what do you guys think? van life channels in general like i don't know do you guys have any experience with these yeah i mean so night thunder adventures is a daddy daughter duo converting a 40 foot school bus into a tiny home. They'll show you how to build it, document the build. It feels very documenty and it feels very vloggy. And I don't feel like you don't need to pivot the channel. Uh, with respect, you have 200 viewers, 200 subscribers, and you've got, you know, the whole channel, 37,000 views. So there isn't a lot of like, you're really not going into like a radically different direction. It, it is all on brand. The thing though is, again, with titles like getting smart with our school bus lighting or living in an unfinished bus for five days, it just feels like you're on a traditional vlog path, which in my opinion is just a difficult path to be on um, because someone has to just kind of get interested in you like a reality TV show. They have to get interested in you from the value proposition of basically doing a vlog um, as opposed to more how to tutorial based. And so I might be a one trick pony, but I come back to like, if you say what's in it for the viewer, because at this point it's probably what entertainment, maybe community relating with you, you're not really teaching things. So it's like they have to decide whether they're interested or not. If you mark my words, do whatever you want. A, of course, because it's YouTube, it's your tube. But if you were to, you know, three tips, three things we learned about the place we just visited, you know, and you go more again, intent based, search based, but more than even those terms, it's just about making videos for viewers, answering their questions, teaching them something, showing them something. And even if you could do that in regards to even your titles, like if I'm a vlogger, I still maybe want to think about searched locations or interest-based locations because the question we're trying to answer here is how am I meeting new people mm -hmm. and how are we getting discovered? And so you could get discovered around locations. And so anyways, for what it's worth, I think that that's the bigger issue. I don't even think the pivot, I think it, you're probably going to consistently get the same results you're getting anywhere from 70 to hundred to 200 to 250 views or whatever. But big growth, I think comes from a, uh, even a, maybe a strategy pivot. All right, we're gonna we're gonna blast through these rest of these pretty quickly because uh, I think they're just basic comments. Uh, shout out to John Cordico Corner to all super chat. Followed your advice and picked up a lot of views after following your advice. It seems YouTube let up on me. I was the guy with the politics new, the politics new channel. Thank, appreciate the super chat, John. Uh, I'm glad we're giving you value. Thank you. Uh, next up, uh, Septic Take podcast with the one dollar super chat. Thank you, Septic Take. Appreciate you. 
Uh, next up, we have Curb Appeal Lawn Care LLC. $5 Super Chat. Love you guys. Thank you for all you do. Tashawn, would you let those who are not VRA members know that, or know what the 1% is, please? I don't know what that means, Sean. Do you know what that means? The 1% of, of what, VRA? Yeah, that's what it is. VRAs are our course called Video Ray Kid Academy. Oh, okay. Oh, I mean, get 1% better with every upload. I mean, the one get 1% oh, okay. better is like the 176 oh, okay. things maybe that you're tweaking and, and one thing at a time. So not getting overwhelmed. And of course, yes. that's where we, we deep okay. dive and teach that. But I think that's what it could be. Cool. And finally, A plus Russian $2 super chat. How does YouTube auto select thumbnail for our for my short? I think, you know, uh, oh, oh, go ahead. Dan, you, you covered this earlier, Dan. Yeah. Yeah. I saw this and I got kind of excited because we were talking about short thumbnails at the time. I was going to say it does a pretty good job. Uh, when you upload it from your computer and you don't get a say in what the thumbnail looks like, I feel like what YouTube is looking for is maybe uh, a close up of a character's face or a person's face uh, or uh, like a phrase or something that it can put front and center. Um, so sometimes the auto generated thumbnails are great. Uh, if you want to do your own, though, right now, as of today, you have to use your phone. And I, it might only be Android or iOS. I don't I don't know. Um, it might not be out for every type of phone. But if you post your short from your phone, then you get to select the frame in the video that you want to be the thumbnail. And I will say, after testing this, every so often, it still uses whatever it wants. I'll, certain areas on YouTube, I see my short, and I'm like, hey, that's not the thumbnail I chose for that. So anyway, it's an interesting system. All right, and back to the video we go. I can... All right, that's great, because we are out of pre-selected videos, which means we are going to be taking a look at randomly selected videos. If you've been posting on that form, down below now is your chance to per perhaps get randomly randomly picked by uh, by this that it's is the claw. so dramatic that is so dramatic <laughs> it's the claw it's here to pick your channels it's hungry lobster claw <laughs> I wish it was a lobster. I think that'd be cool. 468 on the non-gaming form. 401 on the gaming form. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to do 402, and we're going to do a gaming channel. Yeah, at one point, you know, we had over 800, 800 people watching. So shout out to all of you all watching and hanging with us today. Thank you for being here. Love you guys being here. All right. We'll go to number 111. Sierra Buller. Uh, they are doing Let's Play videos, they said. And it seems that they're doing quite a few shorts. Maybe primarily, no, nope, two hours ago they have a Minecraft video. So you posted on the gaming form and you said you're a Let's Play channel, which is a phrase I, I know from gaming. So I know you consider yourself a gaming channel. However, uh, my advice for you is going to be channel focus because every so often there's a gaming video and then sometimes you're taking video of you somewhere doing something. And I understand like the urge to kind of document things you're doing that you think are cool, but you are confusing your target audience. If you say that you play Minecraft and 300 over 300 people watch you play Minecraft and then your next video is driving along and a truck you see on the road is, is the whole subject of the video and it's forever until you play Minecraft again, you are letting that audience down and it's very hard for them to stick with you because YouTube is recommending, they subscribe, YouTube's recommending your videos to them. Like, hey, remember, uh, remember Sierra Buller? They have uploaded again. Okay, but that's not what I subscribe for. No, neither is this, neither is this, neither is this. So if you are a gaming channel, be a gaming channel. If you want to do vlogs where you're out and about doing other things, I would recommend a separate channel for that. I would also recommend not doing that in shorts either because again, people are going to get recommended your YouTube shorts. And then when YouTube recommends a long form video to them, it's going to be Minecraft, but you never, you never did a Minecraft short. So they're, they're going to be like, oh, well, I'm going to skip that one. And that's just more data feeding YouTube and letting YouTube know that eh, people don't really like this video. You know, even the core audience isn't clicking on it. I, I worry for you in that regard. And I think that it's channel focus is going to be the main piece of advice for you. I don't know if anyone has anything to add. That was my, that was my speech. I'll put my soapbox away. Well, I mean, I think we also have, there's no cover, correct? No cover art on the channel. I mean, it's 2023, everybody watching this uh, with love and respect. If you're watching this and you don't have an avatar 
you need to upload an avatar. If you have like an R for your, for your avatar, it's time to get custom. Secondly, um, you know, typically it should either be a logo or a pretty cropped in, you know, headshot, you know, Slav guard manga, it's going to be, it's a cartoon, it's an anime. So that's fine, but it, it should be thoughtful. So like make it a strong logo, but that group photo, nobody's visible. You're like, it's kind of a group of small people at some, like what's happening. So if it's a first and last name, personal brand, probably a, a, a headshot and being thoughtful. Like if you look, if you're here in live and you look at Tish, who, uh, you know, is with VidIQ, you can see nice purple background, even like a little bit of the forehead crop, like that's, you know, so think about 2023, your channel checklist. Let's get our cover art dialed. Let's get our avatar dialed. Let's clean up that homepage. Let's create some new playlists. How's your about page? And uh, just thinking through some of those things, this is your friendly reminder from Viper, Dan, and Sean. There you go. We'll go on to uh, the next non-gaming channel, which means I'm going to have to update the claw because there's quite a few more non-gaming channels today. So 475. 242. All right. They are a comedy channel, they say. I'm not sure how to pronounce this name. Wofitch or something like that. It seems that they are not uh, speaking in English, which is it always makes it a little bit tougher for us. Um, so I'm not exactly sure what the channel's about. They did say comedy. So I'm going like to guess. Gaming, though? That's a oh. that's a soccer game, a football game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we can. I mean, we have a very easy critique to begin with, Dan and Sean. Uh, the dumb though. Why do they all look alike? Sure, and maybe the comedy is gameplay funny, right? Just from an angle. Maybe that's what they mean. Yeah, it's hard to tell if they are because they did submit on the non-gaming form, but it does feel more like a gaming channel than anything else if they're playing FIFA and stuff. Um, so I'm hesitant to go further because we did just say you've got to submit on the right form. That's right, Dan. You know you know the rule, Dan. Let's go. <laughs> so we will move on to the next one. Um, but yes, thumbnail wallpaper would be a, a piece of advice. Different, I also know, a little I'm piece of advice for everybody else here. I, without digging too, we could keep it moving, but without digging too deep in, when I look to the upper right, I I actually am a little bit nervous. We updated a chapter in our book, YouTube Secrets, on social media. We talked about the different seasons of social media. If your channel doesn't have a ton of momentum, if some of your videos are getting three views, I actually would just caution you of also like being worrying about a Facebook page and a TikTok and an Instagram, and a Twitter, and a Twitch. I think that to the point of the word focus, you know, focus has been said, it stands for follow one course until successful. Focus, follow one course until successful. Hmm. And that's something about putting your kind of blinders on and ignoring social media for a season. And, and I would argue that's until you have some momentum, you have some growth, you have some bandwidth. I would even say having some money coming in so that maybe if you're trying to do school and work at a job and grow your YouTube channel and then also be active on Twitch and Twitter and Instagram and TikTok and Facebook and you're by yourself, man, it's a recipe for just like chasing. If you try and chase 10 rabbits, you're going to end up catching neither of them. So just a thought. And for anybody that for what it's worth, um, I would want to devote all my energy. I think YouTube is the best place to devote all your energy because it pays the best. It has the most compounding growth if you are putting out great videos the way the algorithm works so uh in 2023 name make it your goal to focus follow one course until successful great great tip there uh okay so we'll spin up the claw again here it's going to pick number 47 about rk's artwork All right. There we go. We have uh, the proper channel this time. Uh, 66 subscribers. It's getting... Okay, so maybe 10, 20 views per video. 
you know what I mean, I'm thumbnails thinking. are a little too busy. If we scroll up mm -hmm. to like the, the learn watercolor one, the third over from the right on the top line. So like if it says how to create a watercolor illustration easy, um, watercolor painting tutorial, that's pretty good as far as the title. But what, what I would argue then is there's a, a ton of things that are unnecessary in the thumbnail. Learn watercolor is already implied. Create watercolor, learn watercolor, so that can go away. Illustration is already in the title, so that can go away. RK's artwork is the channel name and nobody cares, so that can go away. And therefore, the house and the grass with the road going to the house, the actual watercolor itself, I assume in the video, could be zoomed up to fill the whole entire frame. Mm -hmm. And you could potentially just say, quick tutorial if you need text at all or easy tutorial and those become supportive words that let people know they're going to have a tutorial and it's going to be fast or easy which is desires of the viewer um and seven minutes is pretty easy is or it's pretty quick and um yeah that could just power that up so you know try to uh eliminate our goal at think media is three or less words our ultimate goal goal is no words and we also try to avoid echoing the words that are in the title and the thumbnail because they're already in the title. So where the title might say for that second one over from, so the one that says full tutorial, create a watercolor illustration like this, like the only words on there could be try this or, yeah. and then you've got the arrow pointing to it and, and then the title does the rest of the work. And so common theme you'll hear from us here doing channel reviews but yeah if we can simplify down the um the thumbnails and then another detail i want to challenge you with is i i do uh, i think that it's a little thing but i i think everything speaks like details matter consider the professionalism of your titles like are they going to be title case are they all uppercase are they lowercase? And in some cases, they're just inconsistent. So it's like watercolor illustration tutorial. Why is the T lowercase in the tutorial? And then we go back to a capital. Like, so while certainly videos can get away with maybe it being inconsistent or seeming like it feels like it doesn't care, for some channels, like all lowercase can kind of even be a little bit more of a YouTube short, kind of a meme culture, kind of even a Gen Z culture, fine, but just know what you're doing. What can speak though, is that if there's just no rhyme or reason, top five watercolor, the W in watercolor is capitalized, but then painting tips, slower case and everything else. What it actually just says is it's like, so so it, it's, it feels rushed or lacking profession. So, I think that all those details, like, you know, uh, our friend, you know, Tim Schmoyer, oftentimes I heard him say once that get, good design at least gives you perceived credibility. Doesn't yeah. mean you actually have credibility, but good design at least gives you perceived credibility. So if someone lands on your channel and the thumbnails are clean and the branding is sharp and the titles are written professionally and there's a consistency to it, then that all speaks, if not consciously, subconsciously. And you don't want to be pushing anybody away because of a lack of attention to little details like that. Uh, the one thing I'll add about the thumbnail real quick is that for the, for the love of God, you all, never, ever, ever use cursive writing in thumbnails. Just do not do it. Avoid it like the plague because most of the time we won't be able to understand what that word is anyway. So do not use cursive writing at all in your thumbnail. Thank you very much. You know, another little nuance, because I don't see too many people do this, but that lower right hand corner live premiere, I think that that's uh, uh, completely unnecessary. So my thought was, yeah. okay, you're planning on doing this as a premiere. So then you're putting live premiere in the title, and then you put it in the thumbnail, and then I'm sure you scheduled to premiere the video. But that is such a one time event that is then over once it's over. And the replay value has doesn't care about that fact at all. So for what it's worth, you could delete that because it's kind of a waste of characters and it's a waste of space. It's also sort of a waste of the, of the thumbnail. And I don't even think it would have been worth doing in the first place, right. but you should at least make a second thumbnail once it's over mm -hmm. to change it out because on the replay, you're like, well, nothing about this is a live premiere. And um, I just think it would be sideways energy to even do that. But for what it's worth, and I'm curious what Dan and Viper even feel about premieres. 
um, the, the return on investment of doing them. I know YouTube does say your, your normal videos, your live streams and your premieres in the first seven days. And it kind of says to try to show you, are you getting different analytics from those? But, uh, yeah, I don't even know if it would be worth really doing premieres. It maybe depends on the channel size and the content itself. Any thoughts? I, I've often wondered myself, like, when would I use this feature? I, I wouldn't use it every time, that's for sure. I think a premiere is great for something really like a big special thing, you know, like where, where being there with a live chat but alongside it is like necessary or helpful. Uh, one channel I saw this use this really well. I forget their name now, but they did like marble racing. Like they would do these like Olympic sports, but all with marbles. And they'd tell all these stories. It was really cool. And they would premiere those videos. And the reason they did it was because you would get spoilers in the comments because uh, someone's going to win and people are going to be talking about the winner in the comments. So if you are there for the live premiere, you have the least amount of chance of getting it spoiled. It has mm. to be heavily edited for it to look as, as good as it does. Doing it live would be almost impossible, I'm sure. But you know, at the end of the day, like that premiere made a lot of sense to me. I would say that I also, what annoys me about premieres is yes, I know you could turn on notifications, which I don't do like to be notified when a premiere is happening. And so whenever I see people in my subscription feed that have a premiere, I'm just annoyed because I'm like, okay, cool. So the video doesn't exist yet. Well, I'm not going to come back and watch <laughs> yep. it. Like, I want to watch it now because I right. can see the thumbnail. I can see the title. I know you've uploaded it. And and so why don't you just release it? Or why don't you just... So now that it's out, it can get the click. It can get... So, I mean, I'm curious. So we'll pass the question off to the community here. Do you like premieres? So do you use premieres? Do you like them? Do they annoy you? Have you found better results with them? I'm curious... Um, that my general take is that again, when it's ready to be released, release it at the optimal time so that it can just satisfy the viewer. That's already, they're already aware of it in the moment that they're seeing that. And so, um, but uh, I am curious what everybody thinks here. Yeah, I have a, I don't think I've, actually, I know I've never done a premiere in my YouTube career. I just, um, I just never really saw a point for it, but I do agree with what Dan said earlier. If you're going to do a premiere, uh, it should be like a big uh, special event type deal. Um, and the other thing that me and Emily Baker uh, definitely agree on is that if you're going to do a premiere, you better make sure you're behind it in the premiere. You be in the chat, okay? Do not do a premiere if you cannot be present in the chat when the premiere goes live. Do not do that. That is just one of the most annoying things ever. I've seen creators do it. I, 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 I It makes me want to leave immediately. So yeah, just make sure you're present. If you're going to do a premiere, be present. The weekly wrap up says that they've it hypes viewers and they've seen increased engagement, which is cool. But I also see Car Snob. They say everyone premieres too far out. That'd be another pet peeve of mine. Yeah. You give me a premiere that's in three weeks. So I'm like, <laughs> what the heck is that about? Like, I mean, maybe tomorrow or they they schedule 15 different videos. So oh. all of a sudden in the sub feed, you're like, okay, so oh, you're yeah. premiering. No. Here's like the schedule for the rest of the month. So anyways, uh, it is funny. There's a little bit of de debate and some people are getting results with them. I saw the channel that was saying they got results is a, um, uh, the weekly wrap up, you know, it looks like they've got a pretty good engaged audience talking about gaming news and recaps there. And so, yeah, if you're engaged in the chat, you build a culture around it. I see too many people using them lazily. They, they're not in the chat. 99% oh, no. of the people I see them or not, they just schedule oh, it. No. They schedule seven of them. And uh, they're definitely not there. So anyways, uh -uh. yeah. Uh, I had one extra thing to add to this channel. You guys gave some great advice. I, I'm going to add one thing in terms of just how I, I like to look at art channels like this and go, okay, how could you jump on a trend to just try and get some more notoriety? And one thing I think you could do since you're really good at painting these different scenes and stuff, I think what if you took a popular movie or a TV show and you did a watercolor of one of the popular sets from the show. I think that could be pretty cool. It could be a way to jump on a trend and showcase your talents at the same time. I go I go into trends a lot when it comes to art channels because it's really, I have to imagine, really hard to grow when it's like um, how to make a watercolor illustration. And it's, you know, it's like a place you've never seen before, but it's definitely like some kind of scenic place. Like, what if you did the same kind of tutorial, but you were painting, you know, uh, 
part part of that town from Wednesday. The the show went to Wednesday on Netflix. There's this whole town they hung in hung out in a lot. Like, what if you were painting different scenes from these really really popular shows as they're still very popular? Um, that could be just a, something to try. All right, cool. Uh, good conversation there. We have a few supers I want to get to. Uh, one of them is from Masked. How can I get more reviews as a Roblox channel? Play the best games in Roblox that you also love. You know, go down the list of popular games, pick your favorites. Which one can you make the most content about? Which one excites you the most? Which one is going to be something you can think of a hundred video ideas in a snap just because you cannot put it down? Um, that's what I would do. Roblox has a lot of games in its library and at any given time, there's a few of them that are just really on trend. So can you jump into one of those? Make sure you're not picking one just because you think it's popular. You, The first criteria should always be, am I even gonna like this? So there you go. I just started doing videos this summer but I've done over 217 days. Can you give me your thoughts? By the way, I'm autistic. Uh, so I really learn on my own. Hopefully I'm 200 comment, videos right? in 17 days. I hope those are short and not long. Holy That's wild. It's a lot. I mean, my voice would, yeah, is there's a, there's a tension between some people are under uploading. They've uploaded three videos in the last three months. And then some people are uploading 200 videos in 17 days. And there's a tension between those two things, especially with shorts. I know I've heard some like a lot of people that broke out with shorts were posting four shorts a day. Um, and the question becomes, though, how hard is it? How can you keep quality high if you post eight shorts a day? Are you able to work on it literally all day or if you got school or work? And so it's an endless debate on YouTube between quality and quantity. Mm -hmm. But for some, I, when I look at that number, I would want more quality, more time spent on less videos. So quantity is way off the charts. Bring quantity down, bring quality up. More research, more editing, captions over them if you want, more time in the hook, like all that kind of stuff. Like that would be what quality, you know, more research on the topic, title, thumbnail, making better uploads rather than as many uploads. On the flip side, some perfectionists, they go to, they overanalyze and there's like a law of diminishing returns where there is something about good enough. And if you put too much effort, even in one video, you need, you need more at bat. So you want more topics out there. So that would be uh, just a quick tip would be, yeah. I mean, if you're doing 30 videos in 17 days, that's insane. So 200 is off the charts. Well, one a day. I mean, if you were to just pare down to one a day, imagine how much more time you'd have to make one of the, make each one of those a, a little more thoughtfully and hopefully, um, you know, they have a better chance of taking off because you're spending more time on them. I, I agree that there is a debate against quality versus quantity. And I'm always somewhere in the middle because you should pump out a bunch of content when you're just learning and you're just starting out and you just need to like, get you know, get your feet wet. You have to like start somewhere. So yeah, don't, 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 don't be a perfectionist. And even later on, I wouldn't encourage you to be a perfectionist on YouTube, but doing 200 videos in 17 days means that you are giving yourself no time or these videos, maybe there's way too simple to make, you know, maybe it's, maybe it's seven, it's 200 shorts and it takes you little to no effort, but is that translating into views? You know, probably not. If people feel like they're low effort, if people feel like they're not really getting a whole lot out of them, but if you sat down and you wrote one daily video, right? And you, you really planned it out and you, you did some research ahead of time to see, are other people doing content like this? How can I make mine better? You might see way better results and for way less, you know, time as well. Like it probably would save you a lot of time not making that many videos in one day. Um, all right. I'm clicking all the wrong banners here. Let's go back to our super chats. Uh, what do you think of using AI voice over plus multiple stock videos, not animation for fitness tips, sl short slash videos. I have a few hate comments on my AI voice. Yeah, Dan, go, go ahead, Dan. You already know where we're going with this. <laughs> yeah, we just talked about this a little bit ago. I, I don't know if they're asking because we talked about it or maybe they got here a little bit late, but our general thoughts on AI voices, at least Viper and I, Sean, I don't know if you weighed in here. I don't want to speak for you, but generally speaking, I don't like them. I for think sure. they... Are, I think they are disconnected from the viewer. I, I don't I don't like listening to them. Some of them are really bad. They just sound like nails on a chalkboard to me and I just skip them. I don't care what they're talking about. I don't care what the subject matter is. I just skip. Um, if you're getting comments that reflect that, 
then maybe it's time to find somebody who can voice your videos if you're not willing to do it yourself. Um, you can find voiceover artists on places like Upwork and Fiverr. Get somebody you like and just set up a cadence with them where you're sending them a, a script every now and again and they they just read the script off. Now you got a human reading your script. And that's going to sound a lot more personal. People are going to be way more into that. Um, it's going to feel like you put a lot of yourself into the content. Whether like If you're just using a computer, people, how much of the video is AI at that point? You know, you know, is, did you do your research? Did, you know, did you just take a, like we talked about earlier, a script from chat GPT and, and upload the first thing you could, like, it makes people kind of qu have a lot of questions, I think. For fitness tips too, you're at even more of a disadvantage because I think if it is facts, one, I, the, the best AI voice softwares do cost money. It probably is still cheaper than having to consistently hire out a voiceover, but you could, and you may not have money. So then you have to deal with what your, you know, what your resources are. So then you have your own voice and you'd want to invest in some level of USB mic. Those are very affordable. So you could have, that could be very helpful. Um, but if it's a fax channel or Disney theme park tips or whatever, that's one thing. But the thing with fitness tips and like stock video is if it was like five foods that reduce inflammation, you could get away with it because it's like stock footage of blueberries, stock footage right. of turmeric and videos like that could do all right. But fitness is so nuanced. You're just up against people who are maybe as a personal brand going to be showing off the exercise. They're going to be showing off form if that's what we mean by fitness here. So saying that, I think, uh, even apart from the AI voice, this goes to a deeper level of strategy, right? Stock footage, AI voice, AI generated scripts and stuff is maybe a legitimate YouTube way of building out YouTube content, but not in every niche. Certain things lend itself more to that listicles, facts, videos, potentially. I'm always, I'm personally offended. There's a video called the world's most dangerous airports that has 80 million views is a sketchy AI voice. This is, it's old video. And so it's not even like the new good stuff. And it just goes through and the, the footage is like not even correlated with the airports. And I'm sitting here and I'm like, that video made $38,000, you know, or something like that. Right. Because so, um, but, but like the world's most dangerous airports is something you could piece together. And to the degree that you have, uh, human intelligence is still going to be a lot better. If you could pull a couple photos, you actually find a niche photo in the thing of it. You, yes, AI maybe does the script, but you take it to another level. Um, and, and the, the water level of competition is probably going to continue to rise because this stuff will become more commoditized and people will be much well, they already are, but they will be even much more interested in just, I, I don't actually think it's a matter of black or white, like AI voice is bad stock footage is bad it's how you use it it's yeah. it's it's did you pick the right voice was it thoughtful did how'd you mix the levels and some videos have a feeling of low production value to them the stock footage could feel random they exported the video wrong and so it's like should be properly widescreen but it's like squeezed down and so it has kind of and then the ai voice is low quality and you pick the wrong ai voice and then the script is super janky flip it to somebody that just kind of is a, essentially a DJ or a, a conductor of an orchestra is like, you find one that you're like, okay, that voice actually sounds really close to human. Great. I edited the script with scripts. Great. Great. I'm editing the video and thinking about some sound effects, a little bit of extra, just doing a little bit extra. You could still win with the model, but then I think it also needs to be related to the right niche. And some niches, I think, demand more of a personality and some don't. Therefore, we as creators have the choice of selecting the channel topic that we're doing based on the resources that we have strategically. Absolutely. Um, just to let everyone know, if you're giving supers, there is a chance we can't get to all of them because we do need to wrap up soon. Uh, but uh, thank you for your supers nonetheless. Hopefully we do. Um, just... Uh, yeah, uh, sorry, I was going to pick the next one. Uh, hi, man. Do you think 100 or 1,060 subs in two months is good? Yes. 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 <laughs> Although I would caution you all that everybody has a different uh, different goals and journey. So just because you don't have 1,060 subs in two months doesn't mean you're doing bad. So, uh, Josh, thank you for the super. Uh, how can I make retention go burr? 
I am mm. I needing to cut the intro or make the video shorter? And how can I grow my stream view and chat rate? A lot of questions in here, um, but you already are on the right path because uh, you're here at vidIQ and tomorrow we're gonna do video reviews because we're gonna talk about this exact subject. But yeah, having a nice tight intro, having the click pay off as soon as someone clicks in. I mean, all of those things are gonna help retention go burr. Uh, I do hope 50,000 of what that currency is was not too much. <laughs> Thank you for your super chat. <laughs> And then, uh, Josh, get good CTR and retention, but 1,000 views, then none. So you're getting a good click-through rate. You're getting some retention. You're getting 1,000 views. Then it's kind of dropping off. It sounds like shorts to me. Yeah. And a lot of times when that happens, they pick back up. Um, but yeah, without looking at your uh, your stats, it's really hard to say why that might be happening. Um, cool. Sean, it's been awesome having you here. Uh, thank you. And real quick, one last time, just uh, for everyone, who's Think Media? Yeah, always a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Um, if y'all want to connect, thanks for hanging out today. My name is Sean Cannell, rhymes with YouTube channel, and my channel is called Think Media. Myself and some friends create uh, tips over there that will help you get more views and subscribers and dial in that production side. Don't miss the stream tomorrow with vidIQ where you're going to be learning about video production and subscribe to Think Media where we'll help you with more with that, especially related to tools, even if you're on a budget, cameras, lenses, accessories for your smartphone. So if you have not heard of Think Media, check us out here on YouTube at Think Media. Thank you so much, Sean, for your time. And thank you, everybody, for your time. We'll see you tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern for video reviews. Stay safe. Catch you later. Peace.